welcome to Letters from New Zealand. I am John Jarvis. Anyone driving up the middle of New Zealand's North Island is amazed by the giant forest of pine trees that stands sentinel on State Highway 1, mile after mile. Before harvesting, it was the world's largest man-made forest. Now, huge logging trucks and trailers web the logs out to ports for export, crushing the asphalt and the dreams of other drivers in making it somewhere on time. Passing lanes have helped. The problem is that all these exports, mainly to Asian countries, are not used for building, but for concrete boxing and other secondary usages. Hence, profit margins are small. New Zealand has always built in pine after treating it by tantalisation, now illegal because of the damaging chemicals to the environment. Even today, there are no-go areas where chemical damage has not been cleaned up. New treatments are now used, and the timber frames, once stained green, are now a pretty pink. Councils have relaxed their once strict criteria. The exotic macrocarpa is half the price of cedar and lasts twice as long. The once mighty native forests in New Zealand, now carefully managed, can suffer from dieback due to the public tramping over near surface roots. Some of them have been permanently closed. Likewise, the great oak forests of Europe have all but disappeared. Although an older friend of mine recalls his grandfather telling him he once saw an old gnarled oak tree in the surprisingly named New Forest with the king's crest attached to it and reserved for him. Wars have been fought over the supply of Baltic pine for ships and masts. England had access to Australian hardwood, and New Zealand cowrie was the most prized. It grew slow and straight, with branches only at the very top, but could not be exported by the sailing ships at the time. Ships, naval and private, usually stocked up on spares when visiting New Zealand. I remember a petty officer telling me during a visit to Nelson's Victory that teak had been trialled by the Royal Navy but rejected because of the lethal splinters when struck by cannon fire they caused wounds to infect. New Zealand has the largest wooden building in the Southern Hemisphere, close to Wellington Railway Station. The largest in the world is a temple in Japan. Japan's skills in designing and building wooden buildings without using a nail is well known. One scale model was tested for earthquake resistance and survived a Richter scale 10. Earth has never experienced a scale 10 earthquake. When Hurricane Katrina struck Louisiana in the US, causing widespread destruction, prized white pine trees were scattered mainly into the water. Some critics observed that they were salvaged before some outlying refugees. 
Steel reinforced concrete has weaknesses. They only harness a small part of steel's tensile strength, and under tension, the concrete will break before the steel, allowing water to enter and corrode the steel. This led to the development of pre-stressed concrete. In a fire, wood will char over initially while steel will warp, throwing stress on the structure. Today, wood laminates are replacing concrete, steel and carbon fibre. They are made from sawn planks of wood, so they look beautiful. Their big advantage, by gluing together large numbers of cheap short planks, one can make wooden beams and sheets almost any size and shape. With non-recyclable plastic now being consigned to history, wood pulping supplies over 400 million tonnes for books, packaging and sanitary products. It can be processed to produce cellulose, which acts as raw material for fibre sheets, films, lacquers and wood. Production is growing 1.9 billion cubic yards in 2018 and an estimated 2.2 billion cubic yards in 2030. There are many examples of deforestation myths, but modern scientific studies suggest the effects are much less over time. Forests will re-establish themselves, first to scrub and then on to forest. There are three trillion trees covering 30% of the globe and we must ensure that industrial multinational companies do not destroy our inheritance. Finally, a New Zealand property developer has announced plans for the tallest wooden office building in the world. A brave plan, given that Wellington sits partially on an earthquake fault line. In the future, look up and you will find a tall timber tower near you. Thank you for watching. Please tick the subscribe thingy at the bottom and keep in good health.